Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Operator Stadium here with Caterpillar. Coming up, we've got our Spotlight Series starting right now with Ryan Neal operating the 325. Expert commentator Brian Stelbrink is going to be here with us. Let's learn more about the capabilities and what this 325 can do. Gentlemen, take it away. Okay, well, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Brian Stelbrink, product specialist here with the excavators. Ryan Neal is with me here as well. Going to show you a few things today with the machine. We're very pleased to announce on behalf of Caterpillar our new 325 compact radius excavator. It's really where high performance meets versatility in a 60,000 pound compact radius machine. Some areas that we focused on this machine, just to kind of set the stage and, and share a few things with you, where did we put our time and efforts throughout years of development on this thing, is we really wanted to focus on increased performance. Performance, not just from cycle time, speed, swing, drive power, but also more lifting capability, okay? We also focused on more standard technology, lowering operating costs, lower fuel consumption, lower maintenance costs, simple, easy to maintain, easy to use, easy to operate, whole host of technology features. Okay, we know that your work often requires working in very confined spaces, tight, restricted job sites. So we wanted to take the high performance of this machine, put it in a compact radius, 60,000 pounds, and be able to work in very confined areas. You saw Ryan show you all different sides of that machine and uh, certainly excels whether you're working in the street, along roads, bridges, and other places where you have obviously obstacles. So you can see the tail swing of that machine. It's not just about being able to work in confined spaces, but bringing high performance with that. The counterweight itself, that's nearly twice the counterweight that's in our standard 320 excavator. Why is that a big deal? A big deal is 20% more lifting capability. Think where a lot of these machines live, dragging trench boxes around, lifting heavy concrete structures. So we piled in 20% more lift capability with a monster counterweight, but still have that working in very confined areas. The front swing radius also. We do some things with our compact radius machine that you saw a little bit earlier. We have that boom foot. We take that all the way further back. You can raise that boom all the way up. You get the front working end of the machine in tight. So when you're maneuvering between buildings, alongside traffic, we can work within a single lane closure. Okay, so that's the idea of bringing high performance to a compact radius machine along with massive performance. Okay, some other areas that we certainly focused on is I mentioned earlier with the operating costs and also the safety and operator comfort. Okay, so we're gonna show you that right now. I'd like to comment on a few things on the cab. Okay, so some areas that we focused on. Let's walk up here and take a look at it. And you can see Ryan, we're gonna open up the cab door here. And to have a full-size cab on a compact radius machine, our next-gen hex cab that we launched a couple years ago on our 20-ton platform, we're bringing that same cab to our 325 compact radius. Really a big deal to give that operator the comfort, the capability to be able to work in there. It's really your office all day long, right? So in order to have that comfort in a compact radius machine, something we're very excited to bring to you. Okay, from a 10-inch touchscreen display, from a full 360 camera system, so Ryan's able to see completely around that machine on the display, 10-inch display, full 360 camera view, excellent visibility. Everything Ryan needs to interact with is on that display or on a touch dial where he can very quickly navigate through that monitor. Okay, so some excellent things there. Tilt-up console, very easy to get in and out of that machine day to day. A lot of space inside that cab, everything they need to work with out in front of them. Okay, some other safety things that we want to tie in with beyond the 360 camera view, but also, also excellent visibility. So for, as Ryan looks off to the blind side of that machine, very good visibility on a compact radius machine to scout off to the blind side of that. Again, working in very confined areas, we want to provide maximum safety visibility to the working area. Okay. Along with that is lowering the operating costs. So another area that we focus significantly on with the next-gen excavators, and the 325 is a prime example of that, is lower operating costs, which comes in terms of up to 25% lower fuel consumption. How we're able to do that, it's the engine working with the hydraulics, extremely efficient, cutting that fuel bill up to 25% with even more power in this machine. Okay, the other key part of your operating costs, as we know, it's not just fuel, it's maintenance costs. How do we cut up to 20% lower maintenance cost? It's less touches on the machine, less maintenance points. We've eliminated some intervals altogether. I'm gonna walk up to the machine here, point out a couple things. 
It's about lower maintenance cost, so we've extended some intervals altogether on this machine. We've eliminated some intervals also. For example, pilot oil filters, case filters, those are all maintenance items that were around 500 hours previously. With the new electrohydraulic system, they're gone. We're still providing the protection that the machine needs, but we're able to eliminate those intervals, eliminate cost, eliminate time. Okay, so that's some key areas there. The areas that you do need to maintain with the machine and daily checks, they can all be done from ground level. One prime example of that is I can now check the engine oil from ground level. I'm pulling out the dipstick right here. I'm checking the engine oil from ground level. There's no reason day to day to go up on the top deck of that machine. And what that means is safety. Less times you're going up and down on the platform, less chance of possibly slips, trips, and falls. Okay, so those are some things I just wanted to highlight on lowering the maintenance costs and also lowering fuel consumption. That ties in with lower overall operating costs, but still providing a higher horsepower, fast, quick machine, more drive power, more swing power, climbing slopes, holding trench walls, and uh, excellent performance. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Ryan and we're gonna talk technology a little bit. And before, just to highlight some things, very important, standard technology on this machine includes a 2D grade system. 2D depth and slope grade system with automatics, with assist. What that means is there's guidance in that cab to help that operator very quickly get to and stay on grade and then prevent costly overdigging. Okay, so there's basically dig protection on this thing. The second key piece of technology is the payload system, to have an onboard scale system to prevent over or underloading trucks, managing the costs, maximizing your truck loads. An onboard scale system is standard on this next-gen excavator. The third key piece, and Ryan's going to show you that, is e-fence. So for the operator to, to set boundary conditions, whether it's ceiling stop, whether it's a swing stop, cab avoidance is here on this machine. So with that, I'll stop talking about it, hand it over to Ryan, and actually show you some of this technology at work. Thanks, Brian. So, Brian did a good job explaining all the benefits and features and, and all the things that make this machine what it is today. Now we're just gonna physically show it to you. So we're gonna talk about the e-fence features. We've got kind of a mocked up scenario here. These machines are compact radius. They do really well in tight areas. We can simulate over here, you can see the jersey berries of live traffic. You come in and you've got a quick road repair. You bring a compact radius machine in, You've got to do the repair. You've got to dig it out. You've got to get the material extracted. You've got to bring material back in. All these features we have on this machine will help you do that. When you have live traffic back there and you've got your sign person over there swinging the paddle around, stop and go, stop and go, operators can tend to maybe get uh, in, a, in a daze, and you want to make sure that they're not swinging out into that live traffic. So we're going to turn on what we call e-swing. We've got other features in here called cab avoidance, which a coupler and the right GET on this, on this machine Sometimes in the right application, you can get that bucket up into the cab, and if any of you experienced that or got that bill, that's not fun. We also have what we call e-sealing. So if I'm working under power lines, I'm working inside a building, and I want to make sure that I don't get the top of the stick up into structures, we physically can stop that machine from doing that. So we're going to go through some of these scenarios with the e-swing. We're going to put a grade in of three foot, and we'll dig that out, indicate only, and then I'm going to turn the assist on and let the machine do most of the work. We're also going to be throwing the material on the truck, and I'm going to be able to keep track of every single bucket and how much material is coming out of that hole because you got to put material back in especially in a in a fill job where you got to bring full of fill in for that fix or whatever it is we're going to help keep track of all of that so the, everything i'm going to do i'm going to do today with the touchscreen display so good visual right here i'm going to turn my e-swing on i don't want this bucket to get out past live traffic so i'm going to go into the monitor you're going to see the e-fence features and I have several different ones. We talked about e-ceiling, we have e-floor, e-wall, but we're going to do e-swing left. I'm going to turn it on. There's, a, there's an audible noise in the background, and when I swing back out of here, I've got a green dash on here as to where that's at. Now I'm going to give it some momentum to let you know and show you that this machine is going to stop 100% swing right now. It slows down, buffers, and will not allow me to go past that point. So I can keep tracking down that road and not going to worry about swinging this bucket out into live traffic to, just to keep it safe. And you can do it left and right. If you're working in between an area, two buildings, you want to make sure that doesn't happen. You can have them all on at the same time just to make it more efficient. But now we want to go to the gray control portion. We want to dig deep. We got, we've got a repair. We're going to go three feet deep. Not necessarily deep, but we want to go in and put a cut in. So I'm going to go to my shortcut key here. One of the nice things we have here is we have different depths. You can have an offset of four different times. 
So if we've got a four foot cut, I can put in a negative four foot. And then I have three tenths of bedding material. I can put in three tenths of bedding material. And all I have to do is come through here, if they're preset, toggle through those, and it's gonna tell me the cut that I want. So now I've got a 2.99 foot cut in there. And we're gonna dig, but I have to reference a point. So I'm gonna bench with the joystick that I have set up. It tells me that I got a 2.98 foot cut. So now I'm gonna dig down. But this material's gotta go extract it off the site, right? So we're gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna swipe my finger over here and I'm gonna turn on the payload. And it's gonna give us live information. So Speedo, who was running this earlier, he had just loaded 18 point ton trucks. I wanna store that. I'm gonna reset that back to zero. And now that's reset back to zero. So I'm gonna keep track of how much material I'm putting on the truck. I'm gonna cut grade. And when I get down to grade, the machine is not gonna allow me to dig below depth. So we're gonna do all that at once right now. So the top portion of it, if whether I have a two foot cut or a 10 foot cut, is up to me. I have to physically dig that part down. And now you saw that that material transferred over there into the truck. The goal is we don't want the operator to have to hit 15 buttons because it, quite frankly, they're not going to if they don't have to. They're not gonna use the feature if they don't, if they have to do four or five button clicks. So just keep loading material in the truck. I've got an indication of how deep I need to go yet because I benched from the top up there. I still have 1.67 feet to go. I'm not staring at the monitor. I don't want to look at that thing all day long. We've got audible noises to tell me when I'm on grade. It tells me that that was a successful payload, that we were considered it accurate. Our scales, we're confident with uh, plus or minus 3% that you're putting on that truck. And if you can prevent overloading or underloading, prevent those fines from happening, which aren't cheap, depending on the state you live in. And if you're down, if you're putting five ton less on that truck every time because you're worried about scales, that's a lot when you think about five ton less in a day, in a week, in a year, because you're, you're nervous about scale. So being able to keep track of that is a great feature. So we're getting down close to grade. So now my light bars are getting closer. I'm within nine, nine tenths. Now I can dig below grade and I'm gonna show you. I'm just gonna bury that down in there. So I've got 3900s. I wanna make sure that I'm over digging. So I'm gonna come back up to grade. I'm gonna turn on my assist feature which now it tells me my grade assist is on. And now I'm gonna boom down and it's not gonna allow me to go below grade, but I still have some material to take out. So I'm physically gonna manually dig, but it's not gonna let me go below that point. We're still keeping track of our payload all at the same time. I've got this truck nice and tight, nice and close to me, which is a little different than a standard radius machine. Would have to have it a little farther away. We're gonna get down to grade. Okay, it's not gonna let me go below. I'm gonna stick in, if you guys can see my right hand, I'm not touching the boom or the bucket, and it's three hundredths within three hundredths of grade. So I'm sticking in, I can take over any time, I can override that at any point with the touch of a button. So if, say if there's a rock in the way or you need to stop and dig around some utilities, I absolutely can turn that off, dig below grade, put the fill tip material back in, and continue doing what I'm doing. So we're pretty close to grade. I'm gonna stick in, it's doing it all for me. Stays on grade, I can take over, fill the bucket. I can do it with the bucket open like that, or I can bring the bucket down nice and flat as well, which we'll do that. Get, leave a nice finished pass, get down to grade. I'm gonna stick in. The bucket is maintaining flat grade, and it leaves a beautiful ditch down in the bottom that I did one time, it was on grade one time, and it is perfectly flat. And we want to make sure that we're good, so we're going to take the bucket teeth back down there to make sure that it stayed on grade. Going down. Right in. Within three hundredths, on grade. And I, did, I just told the computer what to do. and I track back, I will rebench, and I just continue that process all day long. That is a standard feature on this machine. Everything I just showed you comes on every one of these 325 next-gen excavators. So there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of these tools that you could utilize on all your job sites. Um, so we're pretty happy to show it to you. And Brian, with that, I'm, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. Okay, well, thank you, Ryan. Well, folks, that's our new 325 Next Generation Excavator. Really, we're, again, performance meets versatility in a 60,000 pound compact radius machine. 
Just to kind of summarize for us, we focused on more technology, standard technology across the range to help you on your job sites, more performance, more safety features for that operator and those around that machine, more comfort in the cab, brand new next gen hex cab, and doing that while we're lowering the operating cost up to 25% on fuel, up to 20% on maintenance costs to really simplify things for you and your business. So that's a 325, and I just want to remind you guys that today at 3 o'clock, between 3 and the close of show, we're going to open up this arena, and you'll be able to come on out and get close to the 325 and the other machines that we have out here in the arena. So please, if you can get that into your plans, 3 o'clock today. And uh, on behalf of Caterpillar, I appreciate you taking the time to learn some more about the 325, and enjoy your day out at Con Expo. How about a round of applause for Brian and Ryan showing us this great demo, the 325, everybody. We appreciate you all hanging with us. If you look up on the big screen, you're gonna see a QR code for the great giveaway. You can take out your camera phone, go to take a picture of that. It'll give you a link you can follow so you can check in for the Spotlight Series. And we're gonna give it away free cat hats, cat phones, even a cat mini excavator. Uh, but coming up shortly, We've got Mike Rowe with Titan of the Trades coming up here at 11.30. Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs hosting a great game show. You don't want to miss it. Plus, we've got our technology demo at 12 o'clock. You're going to see some amazing products and machines there. And we've got another great demo at 2.30. But hang tight. Mike Rowe coming up at 11.30 for Titans of the Trade. We appreciate you hanging with here at Caterpillar Operator Stadium.